Okay, building off the previous lesson of how to just kind of get things started, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to load in an ink uh, template that has been provided by uh, the developers of InkGD. So even though we're going to walk through the script ourselves, I think it's also helpful for us to visualize before we start looking at the code how GDScript is going to read, interpret, and then advance our ink story. We're going to start with a function that's called continue story, which basically loads the current instance or the current text that's available to us when we read our .json file. It's going to look for a branch in our story, which is ostensibly going to be a type of choice. If there is no branch, it is going to just continue to display any text that's available in the story. And if there is a choice, it's going to read that choice and then allow us to select a choice in order to then continue our story. I think that this visualization is really helpful for us to understand uh, both the functionality of how the script has been written, but then also understand at what point we're going to want to inject additional code to, you know, basically translate our story into the visualization that we're going to need in Godot. So for instance, where we have a branch, it's between these kind of two moments here when we're reading our choices or when we want to display our choices that we're probably going to want to include extra bits of code to then visualize those choices as something that's interactive in our game. So in order to uh, use this, I'm going to add a new GD script to my top level uh, node in this kind of node tree that I have here. And we're going to just kind of take a look at what that template provides and try to kind of parse out a little bit of how uh, this kind of interpreter or the script is being implemented. So I'm going to right click on the top level or whatever node in your tree that you want to hold this information. I'm going to say attach script and you'll get this attach node script here. Uh, I'm going to say GD script because that's what we will be programming in. And you'll notice in the center here that they have some templates. So by default, when you're creating a new script, you know, you'll get the default template. But the developers of InkGD have provided us with these two uh, really nice templates that we can use to kind of get started and really hit the ground running. So I'm going to actually just use ink template instead of ink template signals, um, because I find that that's just a little bit easier, especially for people just getting started in Godot and uh, using ink. And so I'm going to say ink template, and then I'm going to make sure to save this in a scripts folder that I have seen in my resource. And I'll go ahead and name this something like uh, ink handler.gd. Okay. I'll go ahead and click open and click create. This will automatically open up our scripts window and it will open up that new script that we just loaded with the template that we just selected. And so this template isn't extremely long. It actually looks a lot longer than maybe we're going to be using and we can kind of clean this up or polish this up a little bit. Um, but the, the developers have gone to great lengths to make sure that this template is just very clear, very understandable, uh, and very kind of easy to read, maybe for people just getting started using these two tools together. So the first thing that we're going to understand here is that we have a, a variable that's been loaded here that's using the inkplayer.gd resource uh, in our add-ons folder. It's going to then create a variable that's basically a new, not exactly instance, because we're going to be using that vernacular or that vocabulary vocabulary a little bit differently later but it creates a new ink player loaded from this variable up here. And this ink player is going to be the variable that we're going to be using to basically uh, both parse through our story uh, and make our story kind of visible in our scene and also uh, uh, output or display any choices in our story. Um, so we'll get to that in just one second. So in the ready function, which is a function that's called, you know, basically at the start of uh, the when this node is loaded in the tree, uh, we're going to replace the example path here uh, with whatever path to our story. And we'll be importing that in just one second. Uh, important to note here is that we're going to be importing a .json file, and I'll show you how to do that in ink uh, in another lesson. Uh, so we load in the ink file here. Uh, we load that into the background. 
uh, we connect the loaded kind of uh, signal to itself, and that says uh, that returns or points to a function here called story loaded, uh, which is just to, to say that this is going to return a true value. Uh, so if it's successful, return this and we'll continue the story. We'll get to that in one in second. And then on the it, within the ready function here, we're going to create a story if it's been successfully loaded. Okay. So uh, again, I'm just kind of reading through a lot of the comments and the notes here uh, to you know, parse this out into maybe a little bit more readable English or what have you. So uh, we don't have uh, observable variables just yet. We're going to be revisiting that in just one second or in a, in a future lesson, lesson, I should say. Um, but once the story is successfully loaded, we're going to call this function continue story. And continue story is really where the bulk of uh, what we're going to be programming in to have our story be visible and displayable in the node structure that we've built here in our template. So a lot of the kind of, again, the, the primary information of uh, how we're going to take our ink story and have it be displayable is going to be in this continue story function. So you can actually even see that in this template, right? So we load our text in from where our story is continuing. And it says this text is a line of text from the ink story. Set the text to a label, right? For instance, something like dialogue in our instance. Uh, and, you know, have that be displayed. If the ink player has choices at the end of when the story is being able to be continued, uh, display those current choices. Again, we'll be displaying those in uh, different nodes that we haven't created yet that will be buttons. Uh, we can... Uh, press those, but we can connect to those buttons to be selecting the choices. Uh, uh, and then if we can't continue the story, we will print in the console down here, just the end. Um, so pretty self-explanatory, um, this, this function here of continue story. Um, this select choice, again, does a an interesting kind of background um, thing where uh, or function, I should say, which is that it advances the story based upon the choice index which is being uh, delivered by ink or by loading in our ink story. It will load in the index of that choice. And then based upon that index, it will continue the story based upon that branch, if you will, or that story let um, using the language and vernacular of ink. Um, again, we're not going to be doing uh, binding these to external functions. We certainly could if we wanted to. Um, we'll get into that maybe in a, a separate uh, lesson. Uh, but one thing that I do want to highlight while we're here is just understanding uh, how to observe variables. Um, so we will be using variables in this kind of series of tutorials uh, in order to actually change the icons of our two characters here. So depending on the story paths that we choose, uh, the character icons here will change. And we want to be able to observe the variables in the ink story itself to dictate how these uh, icons will change. So again, just kind of parsing through uh, this template, a lot of the tools and a lot of the kind of understanding and explanation of how uh, this story uh, or how the story kind of importer and interpreter works is already here. Uh, but I thought it would be helpful to look at the template together before we dive in and start modifying this and changing things up. So I'm going to pause again here and join me in the next lesson where we're going to start to import our story and then have it be displayed in our dialog box that we've created in our template scene. Okay, thanks. See you in a second.